Hey everyone, Tim the Collect Jurassic, and we are back again with more Mattel Jurassic toys. It just won't stop. Uh, this latest wave of Dino Escape, we've already re uh, reviewed the Fierce Force and a couple Roar Attacks on the channel, but now we're looking at the Mega Destroyers for this final uh, Dino Escape wave of the year, and there are some really cool figures that are included in this wave. Obviously, I think what everyone is probably here for is the uh, Pentaceratops. Incredible, all-new figure. It looks great in person the action feature is super fun and there's some other fun little details that i'm going to get into during the review and unboxing as well we also have card chart card chart hope i'm saying that correctly i always call it card chart for short but card chart or card chart or uh, whatever you want to call it um here it is uh this is actually the um the second one we've gotten, which I'll, of course, do a comparison with the first one as we get into this review, but love the colors on that one. So, yeah, a couple of really exciting figures to look at today. We're going to do a lot of comparisons, especially with the Pentaceratops, but um, uh, overall, I'm just really excited about this wave because of that all-new herbivore. But let's go ahead and start with uh, my friend Karchar here. Mega Destroyer. Uh, it's kind of funny. Sometimes Mattel, um, you know, releases a, a new figure and then we don't see it again for two years and then they repaint it again. But in uh, Cartridonosaurus's case, this figure literally just came out as part of the last wave of Mega Destroyers uh, that had the regular Cartridonosaurus and a Stegosaurus in it. Um, and then the second wave had it in it again. This time we had this splashy new paint job that's a, a ton of fun. Um, it really pops in this box too. I love the way it looks against this yellow sky. Um, yeah, th that's the Dino Escape packaging. We'll just take a quick look on the back where it shows you, uh, you know, how the figure works, how the capture gear works, which of course we'll check, we'll take a look at. Um, one of my favorite things about Dino Escape, the bigger figures, including the T-Rex and these Mega Destroyers, is that they do come with that capture gear. Wish the smaller figures had come with it. Uh, I think it would kind of lend itself more to the Dino Escape theme they were going for this year. Um, but uh, at least some of the figures came with it. It'd be cool if they all came with it or came with a fence or something. But kind of getting off on a tangent here. Of course, we'd love toy fences to come with our dinosaur figures, but um, that day has yet to be seen. But let's go ahead and get this figure out of the box. It's pretty easy. Cut a couple things, snip a couple things. And there is the um, new Mega Destroyer. Cartridonosaurus in all of her glory. Um, so this figure has got some great articulation uh, on the legs. The legs actually don't just go um, front and back. They they splay out too, which is awesome. So you can do all kinds of cool poses with this one. Um, also, the arms are on a rotating hinge that lets you rotate um, back and forth and outward. So again, you can do some really cool... Um, Really cool poses. The tail is on a ball joint, so it can actually rotate however you want. So it can rot it can um, go, you know, side to side and in addition to up and down. So again, just letting you do some really cool poses with just that, um, just that art that basic articulation. But I, I don't say basic like it's a bad thing because um, they they built it in all the right ways with the the hips that swivel and the arms that swivel looks really nice now everything from the neck up is going to be tied to that action feature which is activated by this soft button it's actually a soft plastic button and it makes the uh the cartridonosaurus chomp down so well it's kind of funny i didn't it kind of like opens and then opens again when you do it really slow see that but when you do it fast it just kind of snaps i think that's how the old one worked too i don't know it almost does a couple bites. Look at that. One, one. One, one. One, one. Wow. So it's a double biting cartridge on a source. We'll have to do a comparison with the other one to see if that's a fluke. Um, but the real highlight here compared to the other figure is going to be that paint coloration. We'll go ahead and get the other one up here just so you can see this paint coloration for the first one. And I'm going to test that bite out real quick. Yeah, it does a double bite too. I guess I never noticed that. Um, so here they are next to each other. Uh, this first one is based directly off of Jurassic World Evolution. Literally, the sculpt and the paint job. Obviously, the sculpt's the same on the other one. I do not think this paint deco is in the game. But um, so this one kind of had a more toned down, uh, natural um, uh, paint coloration, which I really liked. It reminded me of some sort of like desert-dwelling dinosaur. Really nice natural colors. But this new version, of course, really brings the, uh, the wild coloration out with that bright Sort of, sort of orangish red pattern, almost like leopard prints. Kind of reminds me of the Myazakosaurus we just reviewed with the leopard spots, but looks really nice here on the back. 
you also have this light colored throat that goes into the jaw that I think is kind of cool too. Reminds me of like a reptile. Then you just have this deeper, I guess it's blue, uh, blue color um, throughout the whole body, which looks really, really cool. It is a little obvious in this one that the toenails aren't painted. Sometimes when the carnivores are really big and they have really big claws that kind of stuff really sticks out at least to me anyway um but i do like this coloration dare i say i like it more uh, this one definitely feels more natural uh but this one it feels a little bit more exotic and I, I definitely pops off the shelf a little more now sometimes when we have repaints i like to put them next to each other and say like oh they look like they're part of like a you know like a family in the wild or something uh that's not the case here these ones really don't look um don't look similar at all um besides the sculpt the, the colorations are totally different so um yeah this new version i you know i really dig these crazy colors uh i like the face too with the uh, splash of orange around the face looks really nice um and again that that painted throat is really cool so again all the articulation is tied up to the action feature so you're, there's no posing this one with its neck looking down or anything. It's all tied to the action feature. So that's always a little bit of a bummer when we're talking about toy photography. There's only so much you can do with this one. Um, you, know, you can always kind of put a piece back here in the button to kind of hold this mouth open, but there's no way to pose its, its head and neck. It's all just tied to that action feature. But the action feature does have a fun use, which is this... Uh, Dam uh, sorry, capture gear, battle damage capture gear that literally like falls, uh, breaks apart. Um, I love the detail in here. It's cast like sort of silverish gray plastic, but it's got all these cool like padding and bolts and vents and stuff like that. Just some cool detail. And you literally just take this and fit it around the dinosaur and it has this really like really intense capture gear way more intense than the kenner days when it was just like a muzzle and then the the car char should be, yeah should break out of this so yeah just thrashes its head back and forth until it busts out so um and you literally just pop it back on it's really easy for kids which that's the idea right i love these blinders it has on there like a horse and then let's see break out again yep strong bite so um that's kind of the mega destroyer namesake is these uh capture gear you know capture gear breakouts but pretty cool uh that's car charm but let's go ahead and take a look at pentaceratops again i know we're all probably pretty excited about that one i know i am um here it is. It's it's big. It's it's a it's a big one, and I can't wait to do some comparisons with the other figures, just to really take into an account how big this Ceratopsian is from Mattel. They've done a lot. Of course, we'll get them all out and check it out. Um, but this one definitely is very impressive in person. Looks great in the box too. You can kind of play with it in the box and touch it and all that stuff, which we'll talk about sort of some of the textures with this figure once we get it open. But that's the box. On the back side, they'll also show you um, a couple different uh, ways that the action feature works um and uh yeah we'll go ahead and just get this puppy out because we have a lot to talk about no sense in uh droning on while it's still in the box let's get this toy out uh i think i got no there's still a couple more in here there we go there's the capture gear most of the capture gear for these open window packaging, packaging, they really don't put a ton of security in, which I don't mind. It makes it easier to get the toy out. Uh, I spoke too soon. Now what? Now what's? Oh, there's one more plastic tie all the way in the back. Let me see if I can get it. Yep. All right. Yeah, that was pretty simple actually. So out of the box she goes. Oh, cool. Um feet are posable that's awesome so let's talk about this this awesome figure in front of us i mean look at this thing this thing is huge it reminds me of the canceled lost world triceratops that we never got um but i love how it kind of moves in my hand too it's got a couple hinges in it which are i assume are tied to the action features um feels really cool i think i had the tail rotated the wrong way it suddenly looks way better than what it did wait how is this tail how, where, how does this tail get in here that that feels right maybe i don't know sometimes it's really hard to tell these tails that rotate all the way like which end is up and which end is down see now i'm back to being like i don't really know hmm i don't know maybe we should look at the box and, and find out how that tail is supposed to be put on there it kind of has that okay it has this like ridge i think i got it right i think i do i, I don't know
and now I'm doubting myself. But let's not talk about the tail the whole time. Let's uh, let's look at the, some other cool stuff about this figure. Um, first off, the head is all soft rubber plastic. I mean, look at this. You can you can move this whole thing. It's it's literally like old Kenner stuff. It's it's very bendy. The horns are bendy. The whole thing is soft plastic from the bottom of the. The, kind of like the base of the skull down is all that hard metal plastic we're used to, but everything up here is soft rubber, which is really fun. I, I'm guessing they did that because this piece, solid plastic, would be kind of a lot to hold up when you press the buttons up here. So that's just my theory. I don't really know. Um, but articulation wise, let's talk about articulation. Uh, we have all the, um, you know, that those back legs that have. Um, sort of like a hinge out and a back and forth. The front legs look a little more simple. Yeah, they just go front and back. They're not doing anything too crazy. I did notice that the feet also have a little bit of rotation on the back. The front legs don't have that. I've already talked about the tail. We're already deeply confused about the tail. So um, that's the tail. Um, and then, yeah, the, the articulation from the neck up sort of has to do with the action feature, but I did notice that you can rotate the the tr the penta's head on the the neck joint so you can make it do that kind of stuff you can make it look up you can make it look down and and eat so you can do a couple things with it now the action features for this one we have this it's, it's funny it's kind of like dual attack two different buttons back here um the first one does like this thrash which is kind of cool kind of reminds me of stegosaurus and the second one does this head butt, which is really cool. You can you can literally, I don't have any smaller figures. I guess we could grab, who's our sacrifice? Sorry, Kenji, it's gonna be you. You can literally put someone on the horns and say, goodbye. Sorry, Kenji, go for a ride. Ah. So, and obviously that's gonna be tied to the uh, uh, dino, or the, the uh, capture gear, the battle damage capture gear is going to uh, kind of work with this action feature too. Um, what I like about the action feature is that it kind of lets the head come up to like a normal level too versus down. Uh, I, I wish that there was a way to get it stuck up here because I feel like she looks much more impressive uh, with her head up versus down. Um, I mean, again, you can pose it up like this, but it's still, I kind of like it when it's like up. Now she's really looking up. Um, but that's a minor complaint. I mean, it's not, it, it's it's a beautiful looking figure. Let's talk about the sculpt too, before we do comparisons. Um, that soft rubber still packs a ton of detail. You can see every pebbled skin texture there. The face looks amazing. I mean, look at that with the eye and the painted beak. Uh, just a really, really pretty dinosaur figure. Um, the, ba the back part, the detail's definitely a little softer back here. You can see, I mean, it's, it's there. It has all the pebbly skin. It's just not quite as crispy as the texture elsewhere in the figure. Um, but, uh, and the paint coloration is pretty simple. It's pretty basic. I like it, it gets the job done, but I wouldn't mind seeing a, a little bit more um, fantastical repaint with like some bright yellow on the on the frill, you know, to kind of warn predators away. I think that'd be really fun. Um, we'll go ahead and do the battle damage real, or the, sorry, I keep playing this battle damage. It's capture gear, battle damage capture gear. We'll do that real quick. And then we will do some comparisons with some other Ceratopsians because you got to see how this thing stacks up against them. Um, how are we putting this on? Should I read the instructions or should I just go for it? I'm going to, I'm going to look at the instructions. It looks like the instructions aren't much help. There's a there's a photo up there, but it doesn't really show. Maybe they go like this, maybe. I bet there's instructions in the box somewhere too, but what's the fun in that? That can't be right. No, that can't be right. It's gotta be like this. This is, this is my theory. It goes like this. <laughs> No, this can't, can't go like that either. Well, let's look at this thing shut. Oh, maybe, maybe this way, maybe, maybe this way. All right, it's time to read the instructions. There's instructions in this box somewhere. Oh yeah, right on the back, bottom. All right, so it looks like, it looks like, oh, this, this is like a whole collar in the back. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's really cool. So this whole piece, is going to fit back here 
and then snap up there. So yeah, it actually goes all the way behind the frill. That's cool. So it, it goes all the way behind the frill. It's like all padded back here. You have to imagine, you know, the, the dino hunters would inflate this back part so they couldn't buck its head. And then the horns, this thing isn't holding very well though. That's my only complaint. It's, it doesn't really snap like the Gigantosaurus one or the Carchardonosaurus one. It kind of wants to, but it keeps kind of falling off. But I love how the, the beak comes out the front. You can you actually can see her eye in this case. And they have the horn sticking out. Pretty cool. And then, of course, um, she's going to, like, try to get it off. Look at that. How cool is that? And then... Broken. That's probably why this one... Um, doesn't really snap together. It looks like it just fits together so it can it can get shrugged off a little easier. So that's the, the whole rig, right? And then again, put it on. It goes literally over the horns and behind the frill. And it all just fits together. And then you have a captured pentaceratops that must get out. So cool. I love it. Great use of capture gear for this particular species. We all like a, a triceratops that's thrashing out. And I love this this piece, how it goes behind the whole head. That's that's cool. That's clever. I like that. So let's go ahead and do some comparisons with other uh, Mattel figures with this one because I think, you know, that's really where you're going to get appreciate the size of this thing. So we'll go ahead and start off with the uh, debut of the uh, Roar of Roar triceratops here. Uh, one of the big things... Jurassic collectors always want is a bigger triceratops and you're kind of getting it with with pentaceratops I mean this thing is I don't know I kind of have a weird angle here because of my wide angle lens but it's considerably it's considerably bigger considerably beefier um it's longer it's taller um it's, it's much taller than the than the triceratops I know from this angle you can't tell or it looks just a little taller but it's actually much taller the head is much bigger Overall, it's just a much bigger uh, ceratops in here. It dwarfs the triceratops, which I think they should do a triceratops uh, kind of based off this uh, pentaceratops. I think that would go over extremely well. Next up, we had Nesutoceratops from Battle of Big Rock. Um, it's definitely body weight, body sort of from the neck to the tail body, uh, a little bit more co comparable to Pentaceratops than Triceratops. Pentaceratops is still much taller than it, though. Um, Pentaceratops is still much bulkier than it. Um, and their head, their head, nah, their head's a little more com comparable, but this frill is just so big. So what's funny is this thing has, like, the two buttons on top, too, which is, I mean, they all, they all do that, right? Didn't the Roar, Roar one do that, too? Yeah. Uh-oh, it's out of batteries. No, no, it's not. Oh, that's weird. You guys heard that beep, right? I've never <laughs> never heard that before. Must be running out of batteries. So they all they all do this headbutting thing. It's just it's just what you do when you're a ceratopsian. But the Suto Ceratops is again a little bit more comparable in size. Pentaceratops is still much bigger. Uh, next, oh, I knew I skipped one. I skipped the battle damage triceratops. For what it's worth, this was a um, you know uh, one of the first battle damage figures to come out. It's kind of curiosity because it's sort of like a baby, but sort of like not like a baby too. I don't know. It reminds me more of a tiny adult. It's got that battle damage, but that was technically a triceratops. Sorry, I forgot about that one. Um, we also have protoceratops. Uh, I love this species, and I love uh, Mattel's sculpt of it because it's got those tail frills, but much, much smaller. Uh, sorry, you're, you're, you're dead. You're gone. So um, there's another one, but barely compares because it's so small. We also have, oh, speaking of small, we have, uh, I think this is Microceratops. This is a, uh, a, dis a uh, what was it, Destructosaurus came with this. Pretty rare. I don't think a lot of people probably got a hold of these ones, but it's a little tiny hatchling of a Microceratops or hatchling size. So off it goes into the lineup. Um, we'll put it here at the, the very end here. Um, and then we just have one more uh, Ceratopsian toy from Mattel. It's a good one. 
It's the Xenoceratops. We love this one. Uh, and again, this one is probably, along with the Pseudoceratops, starting to challenge the mighty size of the Pentaceratops. The, the, the Xeno was already pretty bulky and large. Um, I would say it's still... Uh, I can't get this head to go down when I want it to. Um, I can't... I can't really get these in, in frame to show you how that kind of... Let me scoot these guys back. Crowding myself with all these dinosaurs. Can't I can't work like this. Um, the Pentaceratops head is, you know, uh, again, sort of wins by default with this massive frill. Um, but you can see it's just a touch bigger than Xenoceratops anyway. Then the body size I was trying to show earlier, um, I would say that they're almost the same. Uh, the, the Pentaceratops seems to be kind of wider. But um, that's neither here nor there. And yeah, they're about the same length too. They're literally the same length of a figure. So even though this is technically like a roar of war slash, you know, roar attack, whatever you want to call it. Um, I forgot. It does this. Uh, this is a Mega Destroyer and it, it still feels bigger even though it looks comparable to this just because of that massive head it has. So um, yeah, that's, that's uh, I think that's every Ceratopsian figure that... Uh, Mattel's come out with so we've gotten quite a few we're, we're pretty spoiled with the species with Mattel always and now we have this uh you know this pentaceratops to kind of um finish it off with a very large size of the spectrum of all those all those ceratops and it's definitely definitely the biggest and you can see it pretty clearly right there with that comparison so pretty cool stuff I always like to compare um sort of like dinosaur types when we can when we have enough of them i think i just did that with the uh Kentrosaurus video that was that was a fun fun one but um even without comparisons there is no matching this pentaceratops it's an all new sculpt it's got that super super uh fun breakout action with the uh the capture gear you gotta love the capture gear on both of these figures um, and they're, and yeah, Karchar is great too with that fun new wild color. So really, really cool stuff. I'm really enjoying these figures and they're out now. You can track them down at Target. I'm sure they'll be on Amazon soon too for people that like to get their toys that way. So you just stay tuned to Collect Jurassic. We'll definitely be sharing links as they come. But um, super impressed with these. Uh, very excited to make room for them on the shelf somehow, some way. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed this review. Again, I'm Tim with Collect Jurassic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.